All right, you ready? I'm gonna give it some throttle. Wow, impressive, impressive. Hello everyone, and in this video I will show you how to take an alternator and convert it into a motor. Now this alternator I got off of eBay, I, I bought it used for 20 something dollars, I think $23 or so. It is used, it is kind of damaged, there's this little piece right here was broken off. And uh, so I will post links in the description if you want your own alternator, I will post some links for uh, cheap alternators that are new and I put maybe a couple of used ones up there that are fairly cheap and uh, you can do this yourself looks like they just cut the wire didn't even bother disconnecting so let me see if I can get this off all right one down All right, so that's off. I don't know if it's all built in or not. Maybe the voltage regulator is in here. And all of this basically has to come off. Oh, okay. They come right off with pliers. So once you loosen them up, they come right off. Alright, well, now that I look at it, it looks like the three coil wires are already here. Okay, I want to interrupt this video by explaining this wiring configuration on this particular alternator. Uh, as you can see, there are three terminals only that are coming from the alternator, and they have about four wires each. And each coil has two wires that it's using. So by seeing four wires coming out for the each terminal, we know that this particular alternator is wound in a delta configuration versus the star configuration, which is also called Y configuration. So this is a delta configured alternator, and the delta, uh, delta configured motors n normally use more amps, and they're a little, more, a little bit more stronger, but they're slower than the Y wound motors and Y wound motors they use less amps less power but they tend to spin faster and they have a faster RPM so so we can uh, and the following video that I'll do I will explain uh, the type of alternators that there are and and how to know which one you have some alternators have three wires some alternators have four some alternators have six wires coming out of them so uh, and I'll explain the video in the next video I'll make and I'll explain how to tell and how to wire your alternator for your specific need. So, 
as we can see after we take this apart uh, the two copper leads right there that's for the coil in the middle for the stator and these three wires are the only wires that are coming up from the alternator so these are the a b and c and you would plug into the electronic speed controller so i'm going to snip these right off right here and we'll go from there one two three and this is what it looks like so this is where the bridge rectifier is is inside this and this part looks like it has the voltage regulator because of this um, heat sink maybe I can take that off and we can see what's inside let's see is it going up doesn't want to for some reason and there it goes so that's right here this is a voltage regulator and the numbers are 4622 A2307T I wonder how many amps that is but it has this heat sink that was on it keeping it cool alright so I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to take that off. Actually, can I take that off? Yes. Yes, I can, I think. Because this will go back in, so the two plastic things will go in those two holes, and then this will go here. Like that. I will give it a little snug fit. Uh, I may need to get some new brushes because these are, I mean, they're still good. They still got a little bit of life left in them, but as you can see, they're almost gone. I think this one went below. I may need to see if I can pry that back open. So this one went under. And this one went over. All right, and then there was this one screw that held them in place. I'll try to screw it to the best of my ability. Well, I think this little uh, plastic piece went over it. Uh, I may need to snip that off and put it on there. Let me see if I can... Take this off. Okay, so I have that off. I'm going to set it right there. I'm going to take this... This is pretty interesting to look at. Okay, so I just want that piece right there. So let me see if I can snip it off. I'm going to have to do it from the bottom. Let me cut this right here. Because this is no longer needed. And then I'll just snip it right there. I'm going to put my thumb over because as soon as I clip it, it's going to fly off. So I'm guessing that worked somewhat. Alright, so now I will use this as a little gauge to put over to put over this. And then I will take one of these bolts. I'm guessing they're all the same, huh? I'll just pick a random one.
and I will screw it on just like that all right it's screwed on okay I think that's in and then this little caps went on like this you'd catch this one side and catch the other snap it right on and it's on there and so this is how you would turn this into a mortar so you would put DC voltage here between these two so this far right one will be plus and the one closest to this metal would be the ground would be the negative so the negative right there positive right there and this um, sends voltage to the middle middle part uh, the stator and then you would actually control the mortar with these three wires a b and c and um, so because there's three wires that are sticking out we can already tell that this mortar is wired in a delta okay so I have this 30 amp ESE I don't know it may be too small but I'm gonna go ahead I have these banana clips here and I will put three banana clips on here and I will connect these banana clips to it and I'm gonna connect this to the battery and then I have this uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, airplane RC airplane receiver and I'm gonna connect this and I will control this ESE and try to get this to work let's see let's start with the soldering process all right now let's cover them up Now these banana clips would plug into the border and this motor needs to be hooked up to the battery. I have this 6 6 cell 18 whatever 650 cells. Um and I'm going to be they're already fully charged up. I will use these to power this motor and the coil. Uh speaking of coil, let me go ahead and maybe connect that wire first before I go any further okay so those are soldered and I'm gonna wrap them around once around that little block just to keep them from getting pulled off okay now we'll put this cap back on Now, let me show you how everything's work, plugged in. So this ESE is going to be powered by three cells, one, two, three. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to actually connect this first. The stator is connected. Then I'm going to take this cell and connect here. I just heard the motor go. And now if I give it power, and it looks like it's going. The ESC is still cold. There it goes. The connections are poor on everything, so you got to make sure that everything's connected. And it does work good, and it does seem like
looks like it's it's working good. Let me flip this over. All right, now I'm going to connect everything and see how well it runs. All right, you ready? I'm going to give it some throttle. Wow, impressive, impressive. Wow, that's, that's quite a bit of torque. All right, and that is how you turn a alternator into a motor. So, okay, so the middle stator part only needs about 3.7 volts. Um, I'm not sure what happens if you give it more volts than that. It may perform a little bit better, it may not. Um, I can try giving it some more now. I will give it um, two cells. So it slows it down. So it looks like the more voltage you put towards the middle, the more voltage you need on the outside. So uh, I would I would think you would need about 12 volts in the stator and about 48 volts through the ESC but this ESC is a 12 volt ESC so this would not work you would actually need a um, a speed controller like a 48 volt speed controller I will post links in the description for which ones would work but that's how you would do it hopefully it helps somebody thank you guys